Audi, Imar Talim here, and today I thought I would have a discussion about four horror films that really just blew me away. And when I say blew me away, what I mean is that I went into these movies, um, for many of them I didn't have too much expectation, and just what I saw really, really impressed me to the point where many of these films are now amongst my favorite horror films of all time. And I thought it'd be very interesting to share this information. Originally, I was gonna say that these were underappreciated or, you know, obscure or stuff. Certainly not obscure, um, which is why I changed from that. And I would argue that some of them are definitely underappreciated, but one in particular kind of concerned me. So I think the statement that these films blew me away is completely true, and that's something that I'll be discussing. So I'm kind of doing these in the order of how much they blew me away. So we're going to be starting off with the one that kind of least blew me away and work our way up to the one that most blew me away. And starting off is actually a movie that honestly I wasn't super excited to see and I ended up being incredibly impressed with it and that is uh, The People Under the Stairs. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with this film, this film was actually directed by Wes Craven, you know the horror legend himself. Um, absolutely adore a lot of his movies and in fact uh, recently I wanted to watch more so in addition to re-watching all of the ones that I had already seen, um, I picked up a bunch more Wes Craven movies to watch and I just watched them from, you know, the first one he made to the last one he made. And while it wasn't anywhere near complete, um, I did watch three quarters of his filmography in terms of the stuff that he directed. Uh, so I think I did learn a lot about his style, his films, etc, etc. But the people under the stairs for whatever reason, I just wasn't super excited to watch it. Uh, the cover didn't particularly impress me. And what certainly didn't impress me was the age rating, that this was only a 15s. Uh, I know I shouldn't make judgments uh, based on age ratings, and this film has very much taught me that. But just the fact that it was 15s and not 18s, I you know, wasn't particularly excited to watch it. And so lo and behold, this is actually an incredible film. And um, basically the plot, um, I don't wanna to say too much about any of the plots in these movies, because I think the less you know going into these movies, the better. Um, but the basic premise of this is that there's this little kid uh, who his family isn't in the best financial states. And so this friend of the family, uh, he ropes the kid in to uh, rob a place. In particular, I believe the place is the landlords who own uh, this kid's apartment. And from there, um, it really, really escalates. <laughs> it's very much one of those situations like Don't Breathe, uh, where people are breaking into the house, but these people breaking in come across so much more than they ever expected. And it's such a well put together movie. It's really funny and enjoyable. Um, the acting is superb and the gore is actually really good. I've seen less gory movies that have been given an 18s rating. So I can only assume the reason that this is 15s is because of a lot of the humor, a lot of the comedy, um, maybe reducing you know the tension of it, etc, etc. But I just thought overall that this was a fantastic film. Uh, this is definitely one of Wes Craven's most underrated films. Now, in the catalogue of Wes Craven, there's still a bunch of movies of his that I like more than this. Uh, like the original Nightmare on Elm Street is always going to be my favourite from him. And of course, I love some of the Scream movies. And there's a few other examples, but this, I think, does deserve, in my personal opinion, uh, the title of the most underappreciated film that Wes Craven made. It's actually incredibly good. And I would strongly recommend the horror fans check this out. It's a really good time. After that, uh, we have a film that I've seen some people lump as a horror film and some people say that it's actually more of an action thriller or a combination of the two. I've always viewed this movie as a horror film and if you disagree with it being a horror film then you're free to tell me in the comments below. But I still want to talk about this film and that is I Saw the Devil. Um, now this is a Korean film and it is incredible utterly utterly incredible um as you will probably learn if you you know follow me long enough i've always been drawn to these revenge stories as uh, they're just something about you know someone who starts out being in the right wanting revenge and then as the peace goes on you start to kind of question more and more how right they are um eventually going to the point but it's very much a case that they've become as much of a monster as the person they're getting revenge on. That's always 
fascinated me. And this is a very good example of that. So just to give a kind of a brief uh, summary of the plot, uh, at least the premise. Um, so there is this serial killer uh, who is targeting women in Korea. And one of the women he kills uh, is the fiance of this cop, this detective. And this cop, he uh, understandably wants revenge. He takes a few weeks off of, from work, he takes a bunch of the files, and he gets down to searching for your man. But once he's found your man, the story doesn't simply end there. He wants to make life as grueling and horrible as possible for this person. I just think this is an incredible film that takes a very hard look at revenge, how successful it is, how unsuccessful it can be, how unfulfilling it can be. And it's one that I will always treasure. Um, I just absolutely adore this film. And actually having rewatched it recently, I was actually super surprised to see that it was actually a much longer movie than it is because Watching it, I've never thought of it as a long movie. I've always been engaged from beginning to end. So it actually surprised me to see that its runtime was actually surprisingly high. <laughs> After that, uh, we have a New French Extremity film. And New French Extremity is something that I've just found incredibly fascinating to explore and discover. I remember, you know, coming across it and being intrigued. And of course, the first one I watched was Martyrs. And Martyrs, really good film. Uh, really well made, uh, left quite an impression on me, particularly the ending. But going beyond that, you know, I've come across a bunch of new French extraordinary movies that didn't do much for me. Uh, and then of course others like this one that absolutely blew me away. And in fact, when people ask me, you know, what's the best new French extremity movie that I've seen, expecting me to say Martyrs, it's actually going to be Don Mapo or In My Skin. Um, Don Mapo is one of the most incredible horror films I've ever seen. Um, it is directed, written, and starring Marina Devon, who plays this woman who it seems like she has, you know, a lot going for her in life. She's got a good boyfriend. She's making great progress in her work. She gets a promotion. It just seems everything's going well for her. Um, but she ends up discovering self-mutilation. And the fact that she can't really feel um, not from an, an emotional perspective, but more from a physical perspective. Like, she literally has gotten a cut early on in the movie and she doesn't realize uh, that she got hurt in the first place. And that causes her to kind of explore her body in terms of what she can do to it. And when I think of a lot of horror films, you know, it's always this external force uh, that is threatening the main character. You know, a ghost, a killer, um, you know, something. Um, but this is one of the few horror films that I can think of in which it is all internal. There is absolutely no one threatening her outside of herself. Um, and in fact, everything she does uh, is completely self-destructive to herself. She is literally her own worst enemy. And there's just something about watching uh, this woman's life collapse due to this discovery of self-harm. Um, that is really, really fascinating. In My Skin is literally a horror film that, again, I think most people who are into the horror genre should check out. Definitely, if you're a new French Extremity fan, you have to watch this film. This is like one of the quintessential new French Extremity movies. And finally, um, the horror film that blew me away the most. Um, now, this is the film that I was thinking to myself, is this underappreciated? Is this, you know, obscure? It's certainly not obscure. I think doing some research into it, it's clear that a lot of horror fans are well aware of this movie. Now, how many of them appreciate it like I do? I don't know. So I don't know if it's underrated or not, which is why I wanted to go from the perspective of me being blown away by it more than anything else. And that is uh, The Devil's Rejects. Uh, now, The Devil's Rejects is one of my favorite horror films of all time. In the past, I would have definitely said that it was my favorite horror film of all time. Uh, but since then, I've come across so many incredible horror films that um, I'm kind of undecided on whether this remains my favorite. But I can definitively say that it is still one of my favorite horror films. And just to get kind of some of the plot out of the way first. Um, so this movie is actually a sequel, uh, but it's one of those sequels where 
you know, you'll get some stuff more if you've seen the previous one, but you really don't need to have seen the first film. This film is a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses, and it is so stylistically different to that film. Um, I actually saw this movie first before I saw House of a Thousand Corpses, and the plot is basically in the aftermath of the events of that film. A sheriff, who is the brother of a sheriff who's been killed in the first film, comes across the Firefly family, which is what they're known as, um, and decides that he is going to capture them, he's going to do what he wants with them, etc, etc. And there's this amazing siege scene right at the beginning of the film, which really, really starts the film out on a good note. And from there, um, it becomes kind of like a road movie. Um, you're basically watching these people fleeing the cops, they're looking for kind of a safe haven, uh, while the sheriff is trying to figure out where they are. And again, I will say that I absolutely love revenge and how it can be explored in media. And this is another fine example of the sheriff. You know, in many ways he feels, and we feel, that he's justified uh, going after these people and doing what he wants to them. Um, but as the film goes on, it is very much a case uh, that he begins to sink down to their level and we start to empathize with him less and less. And I just think it's, utterly fantastic. And there's just something as well that I find fascinating about the main characters and their camaraderie with each other. They are some of the most messed up people that you can ever meet in life, and yet their loyalty to each other, uh, how much they care for each other, uh, the fact that they're willing to defend each other against all outsiders, uh, it is really, really endearing in a kind of a strange, odd way. Because as I said, these are terrible, terrible people who if you ever came across them in life, they would make your blood crawl and you'd be absolutely terrified out of your wits, but you just find them so interesting to hang out with. And it's just a movie that has left a lot of impact on me. When I think of a lot of horror movies, I'm quite often comparing them to this one. Now in the future, I would love to discuss the Firefly trilogy as a whole, uh, as House of a Thousand Corpses and Three from Hell, because those movies I'm not quite as fond of as The Devil's Rejects. Uh, like The Devil's Rejects, as I said, is one of my favorite movies ever, whereas those two aren't. But that'll be for another video. Suffice to say, you don't need to see Has of a Thousand Corpses. You will get a little bit more out of this movie if you have, but you can watch The Devil's Rejects by itself and still enjoy it as an incredible experience. So those were four horror films that blew me away and Hopefully you found this video very interesting to watch. And of course, I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Uh, for instance, have you seen any of these films? If you have, did you like them? Did you dislike them? Do you think that they are deserving to blow people away? What are some examples of horror films that you've seen that, you know, you're going into it, you thought maybe you just kind of like it, or maybe you thought that you weren't going to like it, and then you were absolutely blown away. I would absolutely love to hear that in the comments below. And of course, if you have any other information about horror films, about any of these directors or genres, etc, etc, I would absolutely love to hear those as well in the comments below. And of course, if you want to support the channel, I would encourage you to use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. When you purchase horror through those affiliate links, not only supporting me, not only supporting the channel, but you're also supporting the horror industry. So I'd highly encourage you to purchase your horror through those affiliate links. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.